Welcome to Risk Roundup. Along with the ever-changing definition, nature, and objectives of computers, the continued evolution towards cheaper processes and faster networks has enabled a shift from desktop workstations to laptops, tablets, smartphones, to everyday connected objects called Internet of Things, in short referred to as IoT, and now towards Internet of Everything, in short referred to as IOE. Due to the rapid evolution towards Internet of Everything, there is a growing excitement that it will bring nations the next industrial revolution because of the way it will change the way we the people will live, work, entertain, shop, and travel, as well as how nations, its government, industries, organizations, and academia, in short referred to as NGIOA, will interact with each other within and across nations in cyberspace, geospace, and space, in short referred to as CGS. When physical objects in geospace and space become embedded with sensors and gain the ability to communicate through cyberspace, the new information and communication networks fundamentally changes the way each NGIOA operates and does things in CGS. We the humans now live in a time where the value and competitiveness of individuals and entities across NGIOA can be enhanced significantly as they take a step forward to take advantage of these new innovative capabilities to get the most value from IoT and IOE devices and the data it generates. As decision makers across NGIOA see the vast potential of the IOE ecosystem, they are identifying new growth opportunities by adding digital services and innovations to their current product service mix and capitalize on the opportunity to sell new digital offerings. We have reached a time where those NGIOA that hesitate to benefit from the advances of digital global age could be quickly outsmarted by existing and emerging competitors. Time is now to talk about Internet of Things to Internet of Everything. To discuss IoT's IOE and NGIOA preparedness further, I'm honored to welcome Professor Alfredo Greco from Italy. He has authored hundreds of scientific papers published in international journals, and he serves as Editor-in-Chief of the Transactions on Emerging Technologies, uh, uh, Telecommunication Technologies, Wiley, and as, as an Associate Editor of the IEEE Transactions on Venipilo. Professor, Welcome, Professor Greco. We are delighted to have you on this round up. Great, great, great. Thanks for the introduction. And uh, I'm really happy to talk to you here today and to talk about this very exciting uh, topic. As a matter of, yeah, yeah, because uh, as a matter of fact, uh, Internet of Things, Internet of uh, Everything, and uh, plenty of other acronyms that surround this uh, wonderful ecosystem of technologies is going to disclose great opportunities for, for us in terms of business, in terms of uh, well-being and the e-sport. But uh, I think uh, uh, you have a good set of questions to deepen this topic and uh, try to uh, draw a big picture. Great, wonderful. No, you are absolutely right that this is a very exciting topic and a very exciting time of opportunities for innovation. So, Let's you know talk about that as devices, computers, machines, and pretty much all physical things can now be connected to internet. How should we define and describe the internet of things? Whoa, great question. Because uh, internet of things is something uh, everybody talks about, everybody is uh, thinking about, but uh, perhaps the most difficult thing is to define internet of things. Uh, because it is uh, so much broad, set of technologies that it is very hard to have a comprehensive definition. If you look, for example, at the devices, at MEMS, uh, you, can, uh, you can have a definition about the, the chips that enable and the, the, the integration scale that enable these uh, chips to become e more and more cheaper over the time and enable the Internet of Things. If you think, that, uh, for example, about the possibility of these very uh, smart devices to, to talk each other, the definition would uh, 
highlight the communication aspects of the Internet of Things. But on top of the communication, you can define new services, new applications, and nobody yet found the killer application of the Internet of Things and that will make the next uh, billionaire. Uh, of, um, I'm sure that the one that will invent the killer application of IoT will become the richest man in the world. Yeah. So, yeah, by the, from my point of view, I'm a teacher of Internet of Things at Politecnico di Bari, and uh, I say to my student, the Internet of Things is a something that is enabled by a set of smart technologies, the capability to uh, give the objects that surround our life to be to think, sense, actuate, and communicate. And on top of this, the services that can leverage these kind of technologies, everything together is the Internet of Things, according to my humble opinion. Yes, no, absolutely. Great description and great definition, of course. Now, there is a growing use of the term Internet of Everything. What is Internet of Everything and how is it different from Internet of Things? Yeah, great question too. Um, Internet of Everything started as a um, kind of a commercial brand from one of the leader uh, companies in the sector. And uh, after that, it became, uh, of course, a concept that is, uh, that is being used uh, uh, very commonly. Uh, if uh, we, uh, with Internet of Things, usually we mostly refer to the technology floor. So Internet of Things is, this, according to my view, is the set of technology that can um, enable the creation of very smart environments. But when you allow this smart technology to talk with human, which are supposed to be smart by definition, and with um, production processes, industries, and whatever surrounds us, then you have the Internet of Everything. So it is something like that the Internet of Everything is, uh, can be viewed as a something that embraces the Internet of Things and extends its capability toward production processes and toward humans, robots, and whatever. So IoT, if I would define these two concepts with just two words, I would say IoT technologies, IOE services. Yes. Yes, now that is a good differentiating point and that's a good description. Now, what is machine to machine and why is it important to IoT and IOE? Yeah, indeed. Indeed, machine to machine, uh, this is another acronym that is very uh, difficult to place, uh, but easy at the same time to place in this ecosystem. Machine to machine technology is born uh, from uh, the industrial floor, you see? Even in the 70s, you had uh, communication technologies to enable the creation of uh, buses uh, that uh, um, will, uh, we will mention that we will define them as uh, field buses uh, in the, for industrial application, for example. In that case, you had machine that along a production line had to exchange information in order to get synchronized towards the creation of a product, for example, of a, of a good to, to sell, to be, sell, to be sold on the retail market, for example. That's, uh, I think that this is a good starting point to look at, machine to machine. And over the time, machine to machine technologies evolved. And uh, I, as, as a matter of fact, nowadays, we have uh, more or less uh, 150 standards that define machine to machine technologies. So it's a really crowded space. Internet of Things, instead, perhaps born from another, from another uh, uh, point, from another, uh, is another story, and it looks much more to the internet evolution. Uh, but uh, indeed, uh, since the two um, concepts, the two worlds, basically are grounded on smart objects that are able to, call, to talk, they are, they are basically converging to the same, to the same technologies, set of technologies. Some uh, say look at uh, M2M as a subset of IoT because it only involves communication between machine and machines, whereas IoT also enables the cooperation with humans or with the processes or with whatever. Uh, 
Some others say that IoT is a subset of M2M, but uh, whatever people say, the, the really truth is that uh, machine to machine technologies enable the communication between uh, smart devices. So perhaps it is a, a, another term to look at the same, uh, uh, the same thing, the Internet of Things. Right, right. No, I understand what you're saying. Now, how does machine to machine, IoT, Internet of Things, and Internet of Everything change how nations and all its components, that is, government, industries, organizations, and academia operate or will operate? Yeah, there are uh, plenty of uh, economic studies um, that uh, refer to the impact of IoT, M2M, IOE. Um, over different market sectors and uh, governments and uh, organization uh, to a large extent. Basically, uh, for very big companies, very big companies already adopt M2M and IoT because they know that if they decrease, they increase, for example, the efficiency or they or uh, of them of the supply chain they can, uh, of 1%, by 1%, let me say 1%, they can increase uh, revenues for 90%. So they know this. And uh, so they already adopt automation, fully automated processes that are based on a capillary monitoring system and, actuation, and a capillary actuation system that leverage Internet of Things technologies. Also, there, is a good, uh, there are good opportunities for startup. Because I, I'm, I'm looking, uh, for example, at the top startup of um, the IoT sector all over the world. Uh, they have very, very nice idea that uh, address a very uh, narrow band, narrow scope, uh, very scoped um, needs of humans, and that span very large sector for uh, well-being to uh, increase the productivity in office. Uh, to products for children and uh, whatever. So uh, if for very big companies, uh, we already know the, the potential of IoT and the potential IoT has been, uh, is being already disclosed, for uh, small companies, it is something uh, um, uh, we have to still to demonstrate because small companies, as we know, should uh, uh, invent the killer application of the IoT. And uh, from uh, one of these applications, we will um, gather some interesting news in the following years, I expect so. With reference to, for example, nation, uh, here uh, the, um, the view is very uh, differentiated. Because to leverage IoT uh, to a broader scale, okay, with IoT you can create, you can, for example, make my, my room smart. But if I have a smart room, okay, I can have some advantages, but uh, uh, advantages scale up as soon as uh, you have a smart building. And as soon as you have a smart uh, district, then smart cities, smart regions, and uh, more and more in this way. Um, as you scale up your system and you make your system smarter and smarter, advantages increases because you can finally optimize all the aspects that can be optimized, of course, of our uh, lives and uh, the work, the, the workplace. So for organization, IoT is playing a very important role at the present stage on uh, uh, energy efficiency. Yes. Almost yes. all uh, public uh, bodies uh, and the buildings uh, that are owned by public bodies uh, at least in Europe and US, I'm sure, but also in Japan, uh, adopts IoT technology to save energy. Because with IoT technology, you can, uh, uh, you can uh, detect if, the, if a room is to be, uh, the, 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 the heater is to be switched on and off, can be tuned, the light uh, can be switched on and off, and this can have a strong impact on the footprint of our society. But IoT technologies are being used also in vehicular um, intelligent tra transportation systems. Because uh, uh, using IoT, you can, you can improve the efficiency of uh, navigators, but also you can improve the monitoring 
of the traffic in the city, uh, in the urban, suburban areas, and, and, and so on. But the focal point is that a nation can really leverage IoT if it is a, a digital infrastructure behind. Because of course you can get this very cheap node, and okay, you can say this is a smart node, I can do the IoT. Okay, but it is your IoT. If you, this is kind of intranet of things. If you want to move from intranet to internet of things, you have to have some structure, some infrastructure, broadband infrastructure behind you. The, the possibility to adopt the cloud, the possibility to run artificial intelligence systems on top of the cloud and this forth. So the, while everybody in um, concerning developed countries knows about IoT, and uh, installed already some IoT, infra, IoT systems. The problem is that to capitalize all the benefits of IoT, you have also to invest on infrastructures. Otherwise, it is the same as, as, as uh, if you buy a Ferrari and then you want to drive your Ferrari within, uh, um, I, I don't know, uh, a land without roads. It's, it's very difficult. You, you need truck in that case. Yes, absolutely. That's a really good example. So what do you think is the vision behind IoT and IOE? Where do you think the world is going? What and what impact? I mean, we you gave a really good example about how the you know nations are benefiting, uh, especially for the energy, you know, IOTs and how it is helping with the energy infrastructure and energy conservation. So how do you what will be the impact of ioe internet of everything and also we are hearing another tough internet of nano things where do you see all the impact happening in the coming years yeah um the the most uh, um the sector where uh, i expect much more impact are uh, uh, for sure energy so whatever is a smart grid and the the, the habilitation of the prosumer uh, concept so our building can produce energy and consume energy and so they can trade energy to each other and it is something that um, that is that is happening already the other sector is the transportation because transportation need to be optimized to not only to save money not only to improve the time uh, the delivery time uh, but uh, also to lower the um, CO2 footprint because uh, the less uh, you are on the road, the less you disseminate uh, pollutant. And uh, also, if you think about all the logistics uh, of um, uh, fresh goods in fresh food, for example, where you have to deliver within a few hours, uh, otherwise the, the product uh, gets completely lost. Uh, these are all uh, uh, applications, all sectors, uh, or examples in, in which IoT can play a leading role. Another sector is the smart health sector, uh, because uh, especially I, I can make the example of Italy, but uh, it is the same almost uh, in Europe, uh, perhaps also in the US. I don't know all the stats, of course. Uh, but for example, in Italy, we have that people uh, uh, older than 65 accounts for a very large quota of the population, and this quota is uh, growing faster and faster. So we are an old society, basically. And if you have an old society, you, um, the, the probability, the frequency of uh, diseases are higher but the, 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 the national system that uh, handles, that, face, that faces uh, health problem uh, uh, is uh, its capacity. And, uh, okay, it's a limited budget. It is a limited budget. So if you think at the application of the telemedicine, if you can watch, if you can monitor the status of people, when they are at their own home, when they walk the street, when they, they do whatever they want, uh, you can basically set up uh, um, new services that from one side uh, let people uh, feel safe 
because they know that if something happened, um, the, the, there will be doctors that uh, could that will uh, will take care of uh, of you. And on the, on the other side, you reduce the the load on the hospital that could take care of only people that really needs really needs cares at the hospital, and this can save plenty and plenty of billions of uh, dollars, for example. This is from the point of view of the national system for health. But if you think also as private structures, it is the same, because people could uh, somehow save their own money for medical care by adopting this kind of uh, technologies, because the, perhaps the insurance will uh, cost less, will be cheaper, if people uh, allow uh, the medical system to monitor, to track their status and um, take care of them when, uh, when care are uh, more effective. Uh, this is ju these are just a few examples, but uh, there are plenty. For example, Industry 4.0. Industry 4.0 is uh, something uh, really important where IoT technologies IoT technologies are so mature that the industry is going to fund a new paradigm, new paradigm, the industry 4.0, in which uh, all the pieces of a single of the production floor are able to recognize the other subsystems, to integrate with, with them, and to increase the efficiency of the production system. So these are the, 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 the fields in which I expect more impact in upcoming years. Of course, I, I cannot uh, predict the future for um, more than two, three years because I'm a professor. I'm, yes. Yeah. I'm just a professor, I would say. None of us can predict that, right? I mean, but we do see based on the innovations happening, uh, opportunities that are shaping up and the market trends, we, we can predict that these are the kind of you know, changes we'll be able to see because we have these innovations and we have these ideas that could make it possible. I mean, we, we are looking at, you know, manufacturing sector, transportation sector, uh, healthcare, you just, you know, gave really good examples of that. And, you know, smart cities that are coming up, a lot of different changes are, you know, coming our way. So we can, uh, you know, predict that these are, this is going to be the impact. Now, looking at the trend towards IOE, it seems that in the coming years, pretty much everything could be or would be tagged. Uh, it has its advantages as well as disadvantages. Do you think that, you know, nations or human beings, they will feel comfortable if everything is tagged like clothes or shoes or jewelry or you know any product that you know human beings are using you know their homes are you know everything in their home is tagged all the supplies that they have you know refrigerators that would be tagged so do you think that would be accepted this is more about acceptance because we may have a lot of good technology out there we may have great ideas innovations but if the human beings don't accept it if they don't adapt that then you know it's not going anywhere so what 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 are your thoughts on that do you think that human beings will feel comfortable being tagged about everything yeah yeah this is a common question uh, and very interesting one because it it uh, basically uh, pop ups one of the big one of the big issues of iot and ioe but i would like to reply you with another question do you have a smartphone? So, so is, do, you say do you have a smartphone? Yes, I do. And I love and, it. Uh, yeah. And uh, do you use uh, some social network? Yes, absolutely. So yeah, I use one right now. <laughs> yeah. So basically, you lost your privacy. Yes. So that's the point. Uh, people uh, worries, uh, worry about iot because they say oh but everybody can monitor uh, my habits okay this information could be protected yes. from one end but on the other end you already lost your privacy since you accepted a social network running on top of your smartphone that you bring at every time with you so basically the problem 
here is the problem of the privacy as a whole in our society. What is the value of the privacy? What is the value I can uh, assign to privacy? And this is a big question mark because yes. before, before worrying about IoT, you want, um, I understand, I understand, but if I would, I would have a life without privacy problem, I should not use even, even a smartphone or a telephone because even before smartphone, your telephone, your movements are tracked by the phone network. So basically, it's a, it's a, it's a kind of a problem uh, that perhaps is a less impact than we expect. Yes. Because uh, perhaps the society already assigned implicitly, implicitly a low value to privacy. Yes. Because otherwise, they wouldn't, we, we wouldn't sell one billion smartphones per year. Yes. Yes. Now the that, definition. The definition that we had for privacy is no longer, I think, valid because how, what we used to think what privacy should be and what privacy could be in a digital global age is very different. So I think, you know, the privacy debate that is going on all across nations, people will have to, you know, keep that point in uh, mind that, you know, what we used to think privacy was before. It is not there anymore. I think, but we do need to worry about the security aspect of it. Because, yeah. you know, security, if whatever we are using on the smartphone, all the applications, or on the computer, or even on the social, you know, networks, whatever, whatever you know, uh, applications are being used, if they are not secure, then a lot more could be at risk. And that's what we, we need to address and we need to worry about whether we have the infrastructure that is secured because that should be the you know biggest concern for all of us. Privacy, I don't talk much about it because the privacy debate has to evolve and we have to understand that there are certain things that we have already uh, accepted willingly by you know accepting the digital global is that we won't be able to have the privacy that we used to have you know in isolation age now the digital global age cannot give us that and it has to be a different uh, set of you know variables about privacy that we have to think about but security is very very critical and that's why i think the ioe infrastructure uh, is very very important do you think that uh, across nations the IoT infrastructure is mature and ready for us to benefit from all these IoT, IOEs, and you know, uh, Internet of Nano things uh, that are shaping up. Great question, really, and because um, this question, of course, requires some time, uh, because uh, uh, you firstly talked about security. Yes. Actually, uh, once uh, we realize that privacy is something we have to rediscuss to redefine and uh, but when we talk about security uh, also in this case uh, ICT security is one of the challenges then you have the problem of safety so you have two different problems let me talk about the second one first which is easier because uh, one of the uh, key domain application domain of IoT that I forgot to mention before is safety safety enforcement with IoT, you can greatly magnify safety enforcement. Because if even your wall can sense a carrier, they can hear information that can save people. And uh, we know uh, what I'm talking about. And uh, so this is the first chapter. IoT for safety is very useful. Let's talk about the first topic, ICT security, IoT security. Actually, IoT security is one of the richest research topics all over the world. Uh, because uh, from one side, uh, if with, the, with our, um, I don't know, laptop, uh, workstation, smartphone, and this sort we are used to, we have security problem. And you know that uh, patches to solve security issues are continuously released because uh, making a system secure is not something you can do in one day. In some, it's something that you can 
uh, deal with uh, for the entire life of your system. Okay, so security, uh, we, cannot, uh, we cannot in any case provide 100% security. The only system that is secure is the system that, that doesn't exist. And uh, we, but with security specialists, we can do our system more and more secure and keep it more and more secure. Uh, when you integrate in your system IoT components, uh, these components uh, usually are, you have many components coming from different vendors that adopts different operating systems, that talk different languages, that represent data in a very different format. And when you integrate them, since you are integrating a so rich set of technologies, uh, the subtleties of this integration can be exploited by who want to attack your system. And so a key point, the key point here as before, is not security, it's a standardization. Yes. Because once we standardize, and if we agree on a standard for, a, or, or on a small set of standards for IoT, once we address this standard, we can create very big communities that watch at security issues of these standards and make them more and more secure over the time. But while we but in, at the present st stage, we have hundreds or thousands of IoT technologies. And each uh, deployment is, uh, integrates completely different combinations of these technologies that have to interact with completely different worlds. So each deployment is its own story, its own security problem, and uh, so that the, the, the community is fragmented. And uh, each fragment of the community is to take care of a fragment of the problem. Uh, this makes uh, the, um, the life of uh, who want to attack or who want to exploit the weaknesses of IoT uh, much easier. So the key point, if you want to really address security, we have to adopt standardized solution and possibly open standard solution. Otherwise, security issues will become really a bottleneck of for IoT deployment. That is very true. That's a very good point. Standardization, global standards are essential for us to be able to have a very secured uh, IoT infrastructure. But you see that, you know, there are, uh, everyone is working, you know, in silos. There is no collective effort in planning for these kind of things. And you also see a lot of disposable, you know, uh, Internet of Things devices, which is again a cause of concern because, you know, once it is used, people can throw it away and then uh, there is so much data on that. The risk is not about the Internet of Things devices itself. The risk is from the data that it has. And there is so much data that is generated, collected, and stored. You know, there are security vulnerabilities at each point. There are no effective security measures to protect the data that it has generated. And that's where I think the biggest concern is people are really worried about that this kind of collective data that the IoT devices will generate. If that is at risk, you know, what exactly is at risk and what can be done to protect all that? Yeah, um, as you mentioned, the security uh, spans different layers. Okay? We have the security issues on devices, uh, security issues on uh, platforms, security issues on services. Um, as, um, as we look at the, the open standard in this context, for example, there are some attempts, important attempts. For example, I can mention the 1M2M um, initiative, which is a very global standard that uh, is being supported by important stakeholders of the sector and that uh, enables the interoperations of different IoT technologies. So if you adopt these uh, horizontal, horizontal standards, uh, you can uh, face part of the problem because uh, you, we, we, 
if we converge to an horizontal standard, at least from that layer on, we can be quite safe because uh, even today, we have a lot of data in the cloud. Nobody worries about because fields the cloud is secure. But uh, IoT data will uh, converge to the cloud. So if we think the cloud is safe today, it will be safe also tomorrow. So the problem uh, uh, connect the problems connected related to data. Uh, I would um, I would be more uh, comfortable in this, in this case because uh, IoT data will converge to the cloud and everybody feels the cloud is secure today. Uh, clear, clearly, never we, we can uh, never achieve one hundred percent security, but we feel we perceive the cloud is safe and the IoT data will converge to the cloud. So we can be quite safe from that point of view. That's indeed, good. indeed, which is good. Indeed, uh, there is a technology floor with that could be attacked because each technology is its own, uh, uh, its own weaknesses. But in that case, uh, the attack is local. It's a local attack. So one attacker can, uh, can uh, compromise uh, an island of the Internet of Things, not the entire Internet of Things. So uh, from this point of view, okay, in, the, in my previous uh, answer, I said that I, uh, security is really, can be really a bottleneck. But if we look from this other perspective, I would uh, launch a positive message. So I, I think that the community, scientific and technological community, are converging toward safe, uh, secure platform. On the other side, uh, we, I, I, um, we have also to think about the benefits because if with all this data we are uh, able to prevent or to react, react soon uh, to events that cannot be predicted in advance, it is better. Yes, yes. That's what all we are looking forward to, right? Now, yeah. what, 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 what kind of uh, uh, planning and preparation is going on across nations about IoT, IOE, or you know, IIoT, Industrial Internet of Things, or Internet of uh, Nano Things. Uh, from your experience, how are nation preparedness going on? Uh, different nations in Asia, in Europe, in uh, USA, everywhere. What kind of preparation is going on? If you don't mind sharing. Yeah, according to last stats I saw, for example, for for 2015, I guess. Uh, the Korea, US, and China is the largest number of smart devices already installed in their nations. So if we look at absolute number, they are high. And uh, so they are very well prepared. They are already, they are already uh, capitalizing the effect of the investment. Uh, but okay, but I will, as we know, uh, US and uh, China is something that we could expect, but also Korea, because Korea, uh, since ever, they invested in digital technologies. So it's a great place for whom uh, to work in the ICT sector. But IoT means a lot of things. So if we look, for example, uh, at um, the deployments of IoT uh, and we count uh, the number of, we, we normalize the number of devices uh, uh, over the um, inhabitants of each nation, you can see that uh, sever several uh, EU nation pops up. Because we know that, for example, in the field of uh, cellular technology, EU is still a leader from a technological point of view. And uh, so you can, uh, you, you, we have also to think about uh, IoT, IoT and 5G, IoT and 4G. And in this field, uh, uh, I think that uh, Europe can play uh, its own role. Yes. Yes, uh, see, uh, that 4G, I mean, uh, the evolution from 3G to 4G is going on and, you know, a lot of nations are already uh, have 4G, but not all the nations. And we are in the 
uh, process of uh, rolling out 5G in the very near future from you know what I am reading and hearing. So there are very complex you know network secure, wireless security network security challenges also that we would have to uh, be concerned about from but what are what is your assessment on the challenges and obstacles to the defense and resilience of the inter industrial internet of things what are the biggest challenges you see because one we already talked about that we need standards global standards that is something we have to work towards and that is uh, something that nations have to agree on about the uh, global standards on uh, internet of things but what other you know obstacles and challenges you see that would prevent the effective implementation and adaptation of industrial internet of things yeah um, these are the classical uh, obstacle that uh, all kinds of technology have to um, have to face in the, uh, over their life because uh, uh, think imagine I have an industry that uh, a mechanical industry that uh, which uh, it's a very solid uh, uh, production floor and uh, whatever which is working since uh, 50 years without uh, no evident problem and uh, now someone tell me that uh, if i install iot i could uh, improve my effectiveness uh, the, my penetration to the market and things forth but my company still works Yes. What as it is, and uh, any investment uh, implies a risk. Yes. So, if my company is working uh, today, is able to deliver to product and delivery goods of any kind to my own market, and this market is uh, enough to sustain my company and uh, to update the machines without my companies and to sustain the production life cycle of my company uh, okay i would be refrained from adopting iot but uh, the problem is to imagine what would happen in five years or in ten years if you don't adopt iot because as soon as you don't adopt iot your competitors that adopt will improve their efficiency they can sell the same products to a low price, they will gain quota of market and this forth. So the resistance uh, to IoT, to industrial IoT, are the same as any kind of uh, new technology. People are uh, refrained from uh, investing and till uh, when uh, they see if uh, that if they don't invest, they would uh, start losing and uh, the investment is something really really critical for the company but it is just a matter of time uh, because you have to think also to technicians uh, companies are based on technicians as soon as uh, you hire new technicians which are skilled in iot they will push iot in the companies they will hire at the in and so the it's just a matter of time yes Yes, it is just a matter of time. You're absolutely right about that. And we, that's why I think we will need to, uh, nations will need to put an effort uh, to change their workforce, to, you know, have them acquire right skills and right, you know, kind of uh, understanding about the new technologies that is come, shaping up so that they can do a better job. And there are a lot more, uh, I mean, we already talked about the data that is going to be generated. Now, the big data that will be produced by IoT, IOE, and Internet of Nano things. It is going to bring nations a whole new kind of intelligence. And we will be able to predict accidents, crimes, doctors will get uh, real-time insight into, you know, pacemakers or, you know, br brain chips or... Uh, uh, there, there are so many amazing kind of, uh, you know, advances that are coming our way. But this all requires some sort of structure for big data intelligence, uh, you know, framework. Because uh, if we, the whole purpose of IoT and IOE is to have a collective intelligence, that is the big benefit that we are all hoping for. That instead of you know just having limited silo intelligence based on you know the current. Uh, or the you know previous uh, the way we were doing things so far 
the digital global age gives us an opportunity of collective data intelligence and that is the biggest uh, advantage and biggest uh, strength of the digital global age but this requires some sort of a big data intelligence framework don't you agree yeah yeah absolutely agree uh, we are scaling up the concept uh, to the maximum level in this case and uh, indeed once uh, all your environments are able to sense and you collect this data somewhere uh, let me say over the rainbow and uh, you you have to you have to use this data to predict what will be the future and to act on the environment based on your prediction in order to enable energy efficiency uh, reduce the footprint of transportation systems increase the health perspective of uh, people and the life per and the life perspectives of people and uh, in sport so yeah i'm not a specialist of big data to be honest because i'm a telecommunication guy usually i launch packets but uh, indeed a big data is uh, something uh, which is really chained to iot once uh, with i i would say iot is something that brings you data and brings you a lot of data and this data are also have to be also analyzed in light of uh, uh, the web what is available on the web the web of data and uh, in sport starting from this rich set of data and information you can extrapolate a lot a lot of uh, insightful uh, information to uh, to adapt the system to the collected data and this is when i talk about system i'm talking about everything basically yes. and uh, Clearly, here there are a lot of problems uh, and uh, that uh, requires also regulatory frameworks. It is not just a matter of technology. Technology uh, arrived to a point uh, where uh, it needs really today uh, frameworks of laws that uh, tell technicians what can be done and what cannot be because with technology you can do almost everything and uh, but not everything is permitted so it is something we should really uh, care about yeah absolutely absolutely now let's talk about telecommunication a little bit uh, as we are working towards the evolution from 4g to 5g what are the biggest ch security uh, challenges are you concerned about as you know we go forward towards 5g um, i don't uh, i don't see uh, more security challenges than before because uh, basically uh, 5g is a is a way uh, to uh, to 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 reach gigabit or even more per second speed from your uh, mobile devices so extremely high speeds and um, so these uh, technologies um, these these uh, kind of targets which are very challenging can be reached by integrating very sophisticated telecommunication technologies but uh, i cannot uh, see much security issues then with 4g or with uh, any technology grounded on uh, internet protocols so i would be very confident that this technology will uh, uh, succeed as 4g already did is uh, xg whatever g succeeded already so what do you see that 5g will be able to give us as a you know nations or as humans that we are not getting from 4g and what added innovations and abilities we will have because of 5g yeah yeah uh, basically, uh, where uh, 4G has been, has been installed since several years, we observed that uh, it uh, increased the capacity of the cellular network um, to a given coefficient. But unfortunately, the traffic scale generated by, the, by users increased much more. So the problem is that uh, we need to install 5G otherwise 4g will uh, become soon congested which means that uh, if you want to use 4g 
and everybody wants to use 4G, only the ones that are um, prepared to spend more will uh, be served by 4G. So as soon as the efficiency, uh, the spectral efficiency, which means the number of bits uh, we can send in a small channel of frequencies uh, increases, uh, the cost for each bit is uh, less. So basically, if 4G is great, greatly enhanced, magnified the capacity of 3G, for example, but it is not sufficient because we are really data hungry. And so we need a new set of technologies that are able to further expand the capacity. And this expansion will be uh, pursued uh, using innovative uh, architectures that uh, brings the cellular network uh, inside our houses, basically. So I imagine a future where uh, everybody will, uh, will get its own uh, base station within uh, its own uh, house. And this base station will have a very small range, clearly, uh, for health reasons, but a, very, a much higher efficiency than uh, today wireless network uh, in local area we use in our houses. And this will bring a lot of benefit because from one side, the indoor traffic will not affect the outdoor traffic. And so outdoor user would uh, find much more space in the spectrum to send their own data. And uh, on the other side, indoor user will uh, benefit the gigabit and gigabit per second uh, connections from their mobile devices, which is uh, uh, very comfortable. Yes, and it will be very welcoming. Now, if you have the power, Professor Graico, what would you like to change about IoT, IOE, or how the infrastructure preparedness and the planning is going on across nations? Yeah. If uh, I don't have the power, everybody knows, but uh, if I would have, uh, I would impose a global standard. Yes. Because uh, without global standard, uh, we risk to lose most of the benefit of this technology. Yes, that is absolutely, you are, that is, I think, uh, at the heart of the you know efforts where you know we need to be thinking about that we need to have global standards because we are going towards one of the most open one of the most connected global society and if we don't work as a global community then you know there are a lot of obstacles that we will still be facing so i hope that you know we are able to work towards the standards and uh, i thank you so much professor Graico, for participating in this roundup today we appreciate your thoughtful insight on Internet of Things, Internet of Everything. And our global viewers and listeners would benefit tremendously from the understanding you provided on Internet of Things, Internet of Everything, Industrial Internet of Things, and the opportunities and risks that it all brings to all of us. And I think even if a single individual or entity is able to come up with ideas to innovate and manage the security risk of IoT based on the understanding they received from this discussion today. This risk roundup dialogue has already been of service and we thank you for that. Thank you very much for this uh, opportunity, uh, sharing ideas about uh, this technology that can dramatically change our society is uh, always an opportunity to enrich its own uh, idea and uh, this was an opportunity indeed and uh, i hope to uh, to get uh, um, to have a further chances to exchange uh, idea because um, i really think that uh, we need to talk about because iot is something that uh, refers to the entire society and we should discuss about to feel uh, like a common um, digital society with common ambitions and a common goal Thank you very much. Absolutely, absolutely. And we do, we would love to have you on this round up again. So thank you so much, Professor Greco. Thank you. Bye bye. Tell me. The Internet That's of all. Things to Internet of Everything is one of the most significant trends in technology that has very broad implications for NGIOA. IoT, IOE, and IIoT and its smart devices are prepared to revolutionize not only user machine interaction, but also the way in which machines engage with one another 
in cyberspace, geospace, and space. Nations are already beginning to see the permeation of this Internet of Things across all of its components. If nations can achieve the full potential of the IoT, IOE, and IIoT vision, not only individual humans, but each entity across NGIOE will have countless value creation opportunities. However, all this is possible if we are able to manage the critical security risks that come with the innovation opportunities. Risk Group Cybersecurity Risk Research Center and Strategic Security Risk Research Center are created for this very reason to identify, evaluate, and manage the risk facing NGIOA in CGS and discuss, debate, and define necessary framework, structure, processes, tools, and technologies to manage the security risk of not only the digital global age, but also of the coming technological superconvergence. We at Risk Group believe that risk management, security, and peace walk together hand in hand. Though security is related to management of threats and peace to the management of conflict, risk management is related to the management of security vulnerabilities as well as management of conflict. It is not possible to conceive any one of the three without the existence of the other two. All three concepts feed into each other. We believe that the security we build for ourselves is precarious and uncertain until it is secure for everyone across nations. Tradition becomes our security, so if we build a culture of managing risk effectively, it will lead us to security, and security will lead us to peace. Let's manage the existing and emerging risks together. For more information on the Risk Roundups, to watch the Risk Roundup videos or hear the Risk Roundup podcast, please go to riskgroupllc.com, and do not forget to subscribe and share. Until next time, I'm Deshri Pandya, host of Risk Roundup, signing off. See you next time. Thank you.